Hi, today I'm going to be talking to you about the stick used in Joseph Bau, its physical traits, and how they impact the grip we choose to use. Later on, at the end, I'm going to also be sharing with you a simple strategy for introducing beginners to the offensive swinging mode. So as you can see, this is a traditional Joseph Bau stick, and this is your typical a digging hoe that they acquired at the local hardware shop for a very cheap price of like less than three euros or something. Uh, as you can notice both sticks have one thing in common which is that one tip is thicker than the other. This has led me to my interpretation of why Jogo Pao's traditional sticks have this unique trait unique, I feel, amongst martial arts, of having one tip thicker than the other. My interpretation is that in most cases, in most scenarios in life, people end up doing the best they can with what they have available. And then therefore, it brings to reason, I feel, that at a time when people were pretty poor, and but they had, uh, but they had digging sticks, digging hills available to them, then they transferred their practice and applied it, uh, they, they transferred their use, applying it also for combat. Um, now, regarding um, how this trait, how this physical trait of having one tip thicker than the other, how this has impacted our uh, choice for grip, is as follows. My experience is that whenever I hand such sticks to beginners, they have a tendency to grab the weapon by the thicker portion. This, I feel, is because we humans have a natural tendency to seek energy-saving strategies, like, like leaning against the wall when we are waiting for something or talking to someone else. Um, and intuitively, people feel, understand, know their body, know physics, and they feel intuitively that by holding the weapon by its thicker portion, that allows them to save energy in terms of grip strength. However, when looking to use the stick, the weapon, in a way as to maximize its reach, this means that they will end, end up bearing, locking, with the forward portion of the weapon, in this case, the thinner portion. And as a result, if I end up pairing with the thinner portion, the weapon will break more easily. Uh, as a result, this has led people to understand, and led people to understand, that they needed to hold the weapon by the thinnest portion in order to safeguard the weapon. This in turn brought another consequence, which was that the weapon became off-balance forward. As a result, by having the weapon off-balance forward, people came to, the came to the realization that by simply even releasing the backhand, the weapon would naturally swing by itself around the lead hand. Ultimately, the, the swing obviously needed some guidance and they started using the hand placed at the back in order to handle the weapon, in order to guide the swing. This meant that it made sense to place the most skilled hand, the dominant hand, at the back in order to perform the more skilled work of the strike. In practical terms, I want to highlight just one additional thing, which is by, that by using such a strategy, one is always training with the, uh, with the dominant hand at the back, and therefore the training performed with long, that long double-handed weapon easily transfers to short single-handed weapon and vice versa. While if I were to, as a right, if I were to handle um, double-handed weapon with the non-dominant hand at the back, then I would have to double my training time in order to also train the dominant hand when using, when fighting with short single-handed single weapon. And like that, by always fighting with, with the dominant hand at the back, this allows me to save on training time because double-handed weapons transfer to single-handed weapon and vice versa, as I said, with all weapons.